I have this very large text file containing a list of popular library books. Each book is listed in a random order in this file, but I need them to be sorted alphabetically. How will I ever solve this problem quickly? I guess I'll just have to write a from scratch C program to parse and sort the text manually. At this rate, I'll never become a distinguished librarian. Actually, there's a better way. Just run the sort command on your file. Wow, that completely solved my problem in one second. Don't get too excited. There are a few things you have to watch out for with the sort command. But first, let's discuss some of the other ways that the sort command can help you as an amateur librarian. If you run the sort command like this, without any extra arguments, you'll see a copy of the file where all of the lines are sorted from A to Z. If you want to see the lines in the file sorted in reverse order, you can use the dash lowercase r flag. Now the lines in the file are sorted from Z to A. You can also use the sort command for sorting numbers. Here is a file that contains a list of random numbers in no particular order. If we run the sort command on this file, you can see that the numbers are clearly sorted according to some kind of order, but they're not sorted in numerical order. This illustrates the difference between lexical sorting and numeric sorting. To use numeric sorting, you can use the dash n flag. Now the numbers are sorted in ascending numerical order. If you want them sorted in reverse numerical order, you can use dash nr. When we use the sort command like this, without any extra arguments, the sorting process considers the text of the entire line. For this simple demonstration, this doesn't make a difference. But with an arbitrarily large amount of data, this could make a difference. For example, if the name of the author of one book appears at the end of the title of another book, this could potentially change the sort ordering. In our case, each of the three columns in this file is separated by a tab character. We can tell the sort command to split up each of the columns at the tab character using the dash T flag. This dollar sign is necessary in the bash shell to make sure that the escape tab character is treated properly. To be clear, the dash T flag lets you specify what the delimiter is. You can specify a tab character like this, a comma like this, a semicolon like this, and so on. The dash K flag indicates that the sorting should start at the first column. Similarly, if we want to sort the file based on the author's name, we can specify K as 2. Now you can see that authors with names starting with Z are at the end, and authors with names starting with A are at the start. Since the third column indicates the year of publication, we can sort based on this too. Now the most recent books are at the end, and the oldest books are at the start. But wait, if you take the time to read the man page for sort, you'll realize that the dash K flag probably doesn't do exactly what you think it does. Reading through the definition of a key def makes it clear that the dash K flag isn't just meant for specifying an individual column, it's meant for specifying a range of columns. In general, you can specify a stop and a start position. And most importantly, if you don't specify a stop position, the stop position will default to the end of the line rather than the end of the column that you specified. GNU sort supports a debug flag that annotates the part of the line that was used during the sorting process. Let's use this to analyze and debug the sort commands we just ran. This was our first sort. Let's add the debug flag. Here you can see that the entire line is underlined. This is consistent with the documentation we just read. Since we specified k to be 1, the sorting key that was used starts with column 1 and goes to the end of the line. If we want the first pass of the sorting to only consider column 1, we have to specify a range that goes from column 1 to column 1. Now in the debug output, we can see that the first column is underlined. Now let's consider the sort we did based on the author, which is column 2. Here you can see that the underline starts with the first column and goes to the end of the third column. This is also consistent with the documentation. To force the first pass of the sorting to only happen on column 2, we can specify the k flag as 2, 2. Now we can see that the underline only appears under the second column. Now let's review what happens when we sort based on the third column, the publication date. In this case, this still does what we want since the third column is the last. To be more explicit in case more columns are added in the future, we could specify 3-3. 3 
and this gives us the same output. Something you might be wondering is, why are there two underlines for every line in this file? That's a great question, and we can answer that by explaining the concept of sorting stability. The concept of sorting stability is an important consideration in all sorting algorithms. Let's review the concept of sorting stability with an example. Here is a simple CSV file containing five lines of text. Let's use the sort command to sort this file based on the first column. Observe how items in the first column appear multiple times. Let's first use a non-stable sort to sort this file. As you would expect, ABC appears before DEF. Since we're sorting based on the first column, you could say that the arrangement of items in the second and third column don't matter. Now let's use the dash S flag to enforce sorting stability. As you can see, ABC still appears before DEF, but the relative arrangement of items in the second and third column for a matching first column have now changed. The key difference is that when using a stable sort, the relative ordering of anything that's not part of the search key will be preserved compared to the original ordering of the input file. For example, in the original file, these two lines both start with ABC. Therefore, they're tied when it comes to sorting order. However, since the 789 comes before the 123 in the original file, a stable sorting algorithm will preserve the ordering of these extra columns, while a non-stable sorting algorithm is free to try and sort them, or leave the ordering undefined. Let's review this again with the debug flag. Without using stable sorting, we can see that every line in this file first has a comparison involving the first column, and then a comparison involving the entire line. If we use stable sorting instead, now the second comparison goes away. If we review the same thing from our list of books, you can also see that the second comparison has gone away. You may also want to define the sorting order with multiple columns. This sort command will first sort based on the third column. If there is a tie, it will compare based on the second column. If there's still a tie, it will compare based on the first column. Let's review the debug information. As you can see, the first underline is under the year. The second underline is under the author. And the third underline is under the name of the book. As we saw before, the difference between lexical and numeric sorting is important. Let's illustrate this by adding one more book to our text file. If we run our sort command again that starts with the third column, which is the year, you can see that most of the years are in order except for this one. Since all of the years of publication are four digits, there is no difference between numeric and lexical sorting. But if we add a publication year that's only three digits, the sorting doesn't work anymore. We can fix this by adding the end flag just like we did before, after the third column. And now the sort command uses numeric sorting for the third column. On a typical desktop setup, if you closely review the results that you get from a sort based on the first column of this file, you might notice something that looks like a mistake. For example, this line looks like it should come somewhere just after this line. The answer is unfortunately much more confusing and complicated than you might expect. Specifically, your locale settings can affect the sorting order. Let's review a simpler example. Here is a file containing three lines of text. Let's run the sort command on this file. Now let's run the sort command on this file again. This time, we'll add parentheses around the entire command. We'll also set an environment variable that changes some of the language settings. By setting this environment variable in a subshell, this won't change the environment of my terminal session. As you can see, the presence or absence of an environment variable can affect the output of the sort command. If we run these two sort commands again with the debug flag, you can see that the first invocation of the sort command uses the ENCA UTF-8 sorting rules whereas the second invocation uses the simple byte comparison. If we go back to the command we used to sort the list of books and add the environment variable, you can see that the results are a bit different and the title of this book appears where you probably expect it. You can also set this variable to POSIX and achieve the same result. These localization variables affect the behavior of most programs. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can type man set locale. You can also try reading through the technical standard for the Unicode Coalition algorithm. In addition to using the sort command to sort the lines in a file, you can also do the opposite. With the dash capital R flag, 
you can sort the text in the file randomly. This will provide a different result every time. This is useful in cases when you have the opposite problem. If you have a file that's already sorted, but you want to randomize it as much as possible, this can occasionally be very useful for producing a large volume of randomized test cases. The sort command can also be a necessary prerequisite for many other common command line tasks. For example, if we wanted to find the 10 oldest books from our text file, we could use the same command that we used before and pipe this into the head command to extract the first 10 lines. And here are the 10 oldest books listed in our text file. If we wanted the 10 newest books, we could use the tail command to take from the end of the list instead of the start. In this case, you might want the newest book to be at the start of the list instead of at the end. To do this, you can go back to using the head command and simply use the R flag to reverse the ordering. Here are the 10 newest books specified in our text file, from newest publication date to oldest publication date. Some Unix commands, such as the unique command, require that the data be sorted first. By default, the unique command will show you the unique set of lines in the file. You can use the dash D flag with unique to find the opposite set of lines. D stands for duplicate, and the result will show you only lines that appear more than one time. This is very useful if you want to ensure that the lines in your file are unique, and if they're not, take the necessary interventions. You can also count them with the dash C flag. After counting them with unique, you can also pipe them into sort again, and then do a numeric sort. Another useful Unix tool that requires sorted data is the com command. The com command can be used to calculate the set intersection, union, and relative complement of two files. Another useful ability of the sort command is to merge already sorted files. This can be useful if you're working with huge amounts of data and you don't want to reprocess it multiple times. Wow, these tips will surely help me to become a distinguished librarian. Thanks. Huh. Oh, don't thank me. Thank the sort command.